Hello everyone, I am Shadha Shiro and welcome to Sudha Learning Hub. Today's session, we are going to learn the top important Sarlot Java interview questions. These are the top 10 Java interview questions I am going to discuss now. The first one is, what is the effective way to make a sure all the servlets are accessible only when a user has to validate the session? We know that a servlet filters can be used to intercept request between a servlet container and the servlet. We can utilize this. We can utilize it to create a authentication filter and checks if the request contains a valid session or not. See here, here, here filters are available. If you want to check uh, there is a valid um, person or not, just we can check the filters to check if the request contains a valid session ID or not. The next question is why do you, why do we have servlet listeners? See here, we know that using the servlet context, we can create an attribute with application scope that all other servlets can be accessed. But we can initialize the servlet context in its parameters as a string only in the deployment descriptor. What if our application in is a database oriented and we want to set an attributes in a servlet context for the database connections. If your application has a single entity point, then you then you can do if it is it in the first servlet request. But if you have a multiple entry points, then doing it everywhere will result is a lot of code redundancy also if a database is down or not is configured properly we we won't know until the first client request comes to the server to handle these scenarios servlet api provides the listeners interfaces that we can implement that configure to listeners to the events and then do certain the operations if you are using the servlet listeners, we know that we are using the servlet context. We can create an attribute with the application scope that all other servlets can access, access, but we can initialize the servlet context in its parameters as a string only in the deployment descriptor file. What if our application is a database oriented and we want to set the attributes in a servlet context for the database connections? If your application has a single entry point, then you can do it in the first servlet request. But if we have to multiple entry points, then doing it everywhere will re result in the lot of code redundancy. Also, if a database is down or not configured properly, we, we won't know until the first request comes to the server. To handle these scenarios, the servlet API provides the listener interfaces that we can in, uh, implement uh, and configure to listen the to listen to it and events and do a certain operations. The next question is how to handle the exceptions thrown by application with the another servlet. If you notice that do get method and the do put method throws a servlet exception and IO exceptions. Since the browser is understand only HTML, when our application throws an exception, servlet container process the exception and generates the HTML response. Some goes with the with other errors code like 404, 403, etc. Servlet API provides the support for custom exceptions and the error handling servlets that we can configure in the deployment descriptor file. The whole purpose, the whole purpose of these servlets are to handle the exception or errors raised by the application and send it to the HTML, HTML response that is that is useful to the user. We can provide a link to appropriate home page to send details to user known what went wrong. We can configure it with the web.xml file. We can, if you want to configure the error page into the web.xml file, just we can configure it into like this. This is the error page where the error coming now, exception type and location of the file where we want to redirect. We can just exception type, we can mention what uh, which exception is coming and which location we need to redirect. We can give it in multiple error pages also. Like this way, we can handle errors thrown by the application with a, another servlet. The next question is, what is the idempotent descriptor? What is the deployment descriptor, sorry. 
what is the deployment descriptor deployment descriptor is a configuration file for a web application and it is a name in the web.xml file and it, it resides in the web webinf directory servlet container uses this file to configure the web application servlets servlet config parameters and context parameters and filters listeners welcome file list and error handlers and all those things we are put into the web uh, deployment descriptor file with the servlet 3.0 annotations we can remove a lot of cutter from web.xml file by configuring the servlet filters and the listeners using the annotations see here the deployment descriptor file is configurations file for the web applications and it and it's the name of the web.xml file and it resides in a webinf directory servlet configurations use this file and configure the web application servlets servlet config parameters and context parameters and filters listeners and welcome file list and error handlers with servlet 3.0 annotations we can remove a lot of uh, cutters from the web.xml file by configuring in the servlets filters uh, configuring the servlet filters and listeners using the annotations the next question is how to make sure a servlet is loaded at the application startup usually servlet container loads a, uh, a servlet container loads a servlet on the on the first client request but sometimes when the servlet is heavy and takes the time to load with uh, with might want to load it on application startup we can use the load on startup element with the servlet configuration in the web.xml file or use the web servlet config annotation load on startup variable to tell container to load the servlet on the system's startup the load on startup value should be int value if it is a negative integer then the servlet container will be load on load the servlet based on the client request under the requirements requirement but if it is zero the positive then the container will be load the on application startup if there are a multiple servlets multiple servlets with the load on startup values such as 0 1 2 3 and so on then the lower integer value servlet will be the loaded first see finally to make um, load on servlet uh, load on load on startup makes makes sure a servlet is loaded at the time at the application startup time the next question is how to get the actual path of a servlet servlet in the server the next question is how to get the actual path of servlet in the server if you want to get the actual path of servlet in the server we can call the method is uh, we can call the method get servlet context dot get real path it it gives the request dot get servlet path it gives the uh, it it gives the actual path of servlet in the server we can call the method called get servlet context of the method dot get servlet context method returns the context object the context object dot get real path of whatever request we are getting request dot get servlet path it returns the actual path of the servlet actual path of the servlet in the server the next question is how to get the server information in the servlet how to get the server information in the servlet we can use the below code snippet you can use the below, below code snippet to get the servlet informations in the servlet through the servlet context object we are calling the get servlet context method dot get servlet info it, re it returns the whatever the information regarding the servlet it returns that info next write a servlet to upload a files on a server file upload a file upload and the download and the common tasks in the java dot java web application unfortunately java api doesn't provide easy methods to upload the files on the server so we can use apache file upload jar to make our life easier sorry now if you want to get the servlet information into the uh, into the server so if you want to get the server information in the servlet just we can call the method servlet context object dot uh, servlet context object dot get servlet info we can call it like get servlet context method returns the servlet info or otherwise just we can call uh, servlet context 
method dot get servlet info it returns regarding informations about the servlet the next question is how do we get how do we go with the database connection and log4j integration in the servlet if you work with the database connections a lot of a lot in your web applications it is best to initialize it in the servlet context listener and set it in as a context attributes for other servlets to use integrating in the log4j is also very easy to web applications all web uh, all we need to use log4j configurations xmls and properties files and then configure in the servlet context listener if you are co configuring in the servlet context listener we can easily to load easy to get the database connection and all those things if you want to integrate with all those things we can configure in the servlet context listener the next question is how to get the ip address of client in the servlet how to get the ip address of client in the servlet if you can use the request dot get remote address to get the client ip address in the servlet if you call just uh, request dot get remote address if you call the request dot get remote address to get the client ip address in the servlet the next question is what are the important features of servlet 3 what are the important features of the servlet 3 servlet specification 3.0 was the major release and some of the important features are the first one is servlet annotations the servlet annotations it is a prior to the servlet 3 all the servlet mappings and its init parameters where you are used to define in the web.xml this was not convenient and more error prone when uh, number of servlets and use in the application servlet 3 is introduced use introduced use of java annotations to define the servlet filters listeners and the servlets and init parameters some of the important servlet api annotations were web servlet and web init params and web filter and web listeners these are all the servlet 3.0 annotations in the servlet 3.0 web fragments the one more feature is the web fragments prior to a servlet specification 3.0 all the web applications configurations are required to be present in the web.xml that makes its clustered within a lot of elements and ch changes chances to the error increases so servlet 3.0 specification introduced a work fragment where we can where we can have a multiple modules in a single web applications all these modules should be have a web fragment.xml file in the meta inf directory we can include all these elements in the web.xml uh, inside in the web fragment.xml2 this helps us to divide our web application into a separate modules that are included as a jar file in the web applications lib library folder the next feature is adding the web components dynamically we can use the servlet context object to the uh, servlet objects to add the servlets filters listeners programmatically programmatically this helps us to in this help us helps us to building the dynamic systems where we are loading the components only if we are needed these methods are add servlet add filters and add listeners defined in the servlet context object the fourth method is asynchronous processing asynchronous supports was added in the delegate the request processing to another thread rather than keeping the servlet thread busy it can increases it can increases the through output performance of the application if you are using the asynchronous processing it increases the performance of the it increases the performance of the application also thank you so much watching this video hope this lesson helpful to you keep watching our lessons keep writing to us do not forget subscribe our channel Sadot Learning Hub because we have many sessions that would help you to develop our skills and I will be back soon till then you take care bye bye.